Welcome to Conversations. I'm Muqtadar Khan, your host. And today I'm going to ask you a very serious question, which is in the realm of political philosophy, but it's very, very relevant to what's happening in America today. My question is very simple. Is liberal democracy failing Americans? America is a liberal democracy. We are very proud of it. We promote it uh, all the time. We take pride in the fact that uh, America is a democratic society with liberal values. We consider them as supreme values. This is the best form of governance and so on and so forth. A lot of American exceptionalism, pride in America, uh, American ex uh, perceptions that we are better than others. All of this comes from the assumption that uh, we are a liberal democracy. In fact, the war that is being fought uh, between Russia and Ukraine, even though both Russia and Ukraine were in the in the category of non-democratic states. Uh, they were hybrid. If you go and look at the democracy index in 2020, before the war started, 2019, you will see that both Ukraine and Russia were in the same category as hybrid countries, which are not even partially democratic. But nevertheless, the war is being portrayed as a war for democracy. Apparently, if Ukraine collapses, uh, automatically democracy will disappear from planet earth but whatever it is americans have bought that and they are spending billions of dollars to defend democracy so so this is an important question that i'm trying to ask that is liberal democracy that we value so highly as the best form of governance the best form of government uh, is it actually failing americans that today we have gone and elected a vast majority of americans more than half in every category across the board have gone and elected Donald Trump, who is neither liberal nor democratic. So, so what what is the message Americans are trying to say that they don't like liberal democracy? Is liberal democracy failing Americans? So the question really is, what happened uh, on November fifth? Did Americans pass a judgment and said the Democratic Party is useless? It does not. Uh, uh, address our needs. It's taken over by corporations and billionaires. It just serves their interest. Uh, or is this also a judgment on the very form of governing system that we have in place? So I'm not going to give you a definitive answer, but I'm going to raise certain issues and I'll leave it to you to make this judgment call, whether it was failure of Kamala Harris and Biden was it failure of Democratic Party or is it failure of liberal democracy itself? Or, I mean, you ca you're welcome to also consider that it's a major victory for conservative values and now America and America's liberalism as understood in classical terms has been saved uh, by this tremendous victory by conservatives and Republicans. So obviously, uh, I'm not going to be making that argument, but you're free to reach that conclusion if you're so inclined. Uh, so, so the first point that I want to make is that the country is divided. So clearly not everybody in America is against the liberal democracy. Clearly it's not failing everybody, even though in the last two years when Americans were asked, were you happy with the direction of the country? Uh, nearly 70% or more of Americans said they were unhappy, but there was chunk of uh, America that was very happy with the direction in which America was going. So you could argue that more or less one third of America uh, has benefited from the current form of American democracy, and two thirds of them have definitely not uh, benefited from it. If there were cultural issues at stake, such as women's uh, uh, reproductive rights and the and uh, alternative cultural issues like LGBTQ issues, if they were not on the ballot, so to speak, then it is quite possible that Donald Trump would have got a, an even bigger majority uh, from what he has got at the moment. Uh, I think when we look at this term, liberal democracy, what has happened in America is that democracy has declined and not liberalism, but neoliberalism has become very dominant. So we could ar argue that America is not a liberal democracy, but a neoliberal democracy where neoliberal economic principles have become very dominant. Uh, and 
and when there is tension between neoliberalism and democracy, every time democracy has to give way uh, so that neoliberal principles may prevail. Uh, and one of the direct consequences of this neoliberal ideology has been, uh, I'm not saying anything new, this is widely stated by scholars, economists, politicians, intellectuals, uh, has resulted in a profound inequality in the country. So the rising inequality in this country, where it appears that the economic system that we have in place just benefits a few, the rich are getting richer and richer and richer. Now there are people with $200 billion. It's unthinkable. Uh, it's really unthinkable. It's like making six, $700 million a day. <laughs> to make $200 billion in a year. So there are people during COVID where a small bunch of people made a trillion dollars. So we know about the one per, top 1% 1 in America. So this profound inequality clearly tells you that the system uh, is redistributing wealth in a very negative way. So all our fiscal policies, our economic policies, our tax policies are skewed in such a way that it undermines distributive justice and so the wealth is being uh, basically funneled towards uh, the rich. So when we have crisis like in 2008 or subsequently, laws are made to preserve the wealth and prosperity of corporations and rich people uh, at the expense of the majority. So if you're taking tax money and giving it to people who are very rich and don't pay much taxes, then clearly the system has gone wrong. And then on top of that, we have wars where we are spending billions of dollars of taxpayer money. And since the rich are not paying for it, it's ordinary Americans who live paycheck to paycheck who are paying for these wars, which only the elite in America want to fight. So one, I think, consequence of this neoliberal democracy where the emphasis is on neoliberalism and not on democracy, is rising inequality and, and maldistribution of wealth. Uh, people like Elizabeth Warren, who was my first choice in the 2020 primaries, uh, uh, and people like Bernie Sanders, who I voted for in 2016 primaries, I was hoping that he would become the president. They raised his voice, but they have been silenced. They are now chirping after the elections, but in the last few months, they were just completely silenced. Even they have succumbed to the power of uh, the elite in America. America is not a, a liberal democracy anymore. It has become an illiberal oligarchy. Uh, another consequence of what has happened in the American political system is that elite preferences now privilege over those of the masses. And you can see this in public opinion polls with regards to the war in Gaza, with, with regards to the war in uh, Ukraine. Uh, when, when asked, uh, would, would people, do you want to send billions of dollars of America's taxpayer to save the territorial integrity of Ukraine? The majority of Americans are saying no. They said this so loudly during the poll. And this is very interesting. One of the ways in which the Republicans talked about it is we are spending billions of dollars to save the territorial integrity and borders of Ukraine while we are spending nothing to protect the borders of America. And so this issue of immigration became one of the most important issues which the ruling elite, especially the liberal elite, completely ignored. Uh, and even it was very interesting watching some of the anchors on NBC, uh, MSNBC, and CNN uh, pressing um, conservative people saying, are you going to spend $85 billion a year to uh, mass deport uh, 1.3 million people? Don't get me wrong, I'm not for deportation. It's going to be an extremely inhuman exercise. You're going to literally go into people's homes and drag them out and take them across the border and throw them at the mercy uh, of what is beyond the borders. Uh, so it's going to be very ugly. This is going to be a scar on America. Uh, but the, I mean, the the way the reporters were asking these questions of conservative people on television is like, how can you spend eighty five billion dollars to deep? So their answer was simple: We are spending two hundred and fifty billion dollars to protect the borders of Ukraine. Why can't we spend eighty five billion dollars to protect our borders? Very good point. It is because the preferences of the elite 
are more important than the preferences of the masses in this country. We, we, we will send billions of dollars. In fact, the Democratic Party right now is plotting to subvert the American democracy by trying to come up with rules which will foolproof Trump. They're calling it Trump-proof policies to send billions of dollars to Ukraine uh, into the future uh, in such a way that the uh, duly elected Democratic president of America cannot. He's saying you're taking away the foreign policy from an elected president to advance interests abroad, which some elite Americans uh, have about visions of America, grand strategy to dominate the world and protect Europe for whatever reasons, etc. So, so this is another example of how uh, the liberal democracy is failing the masses. If <laughs> Biden was normal, and if he, ha he had become president again, I had a very interesting conversation with a U.S. senator and I asked him, how many trillion dollars are we going to spend? Not billion, trillion with a T. How many trillion dollars are we going to spend by borrowing from China, making our next generation pay for it to rebuild Ukraine? And will Ukraine have a better public transport system than the U.S.? Will they have fast trains than the U.S.? Will they have a more environment-friendly system and infrastructure than us that we are going to build in Ukraine once the war gets over? He was obviously flustered with it and very irritated with me, but he could not tell me that he would vote against any money being used, taxpayer money being used to build infrastructure in Ukraine that has not been built in the U.S., uh, and that was to me very interesting. That's why this simple concept of America first begins to have such a profound attraction to people because we have an elite who seem to be thinking America last, Israel and Ukraine first, Taiwan next, India next, maybe Japan next and next and next in Europe and France and UK and extra. America comes last. That's why you can look at our infrastructure is pathetic. There is also a kind of elite culture, uh, which you could say has created a class system, white collars and blue collars in this country. And while you know, there's this perception that if you are white collar, if you're college educated, you are the future of the country, you get better jobs, the salaries are high, obviously. You can clearly see if you are a high school dropout, you make less than someone who's graduated high school. If you are a college, if you never go to college, you make less than somebody who has had some college, two years of college. And then if you go to four years of college, which is about one third of this country, you make more money than anybody else who's not been to college. That is very clear. But so people who haven't been to college, who don't have an education, they are having a tough time in this economy because of high inflation, because of the ravages of COVID, et cetera. But guess who does Biden seek to support? the college educated by forgiving their loans. Who's paying for that? If the college uh, educated people are not making enough money to pay back their loans, then it's the ordinary people who are paying taxes. You're taking the money of all of Americans and giving it to just one segment of Americans who, by the way, also vote for you. That is not democratic at all. You could create a pool where people can get resources for self-development. You can take that money and pay for your college loans, or you can take that money and learn new skills, give equal amount of money to people based on where they are economically. So this, there is a new class system that has emerged uh, uh, under the guise of liberal democracy. And of course, money, money, money. Uh, I now, when I talk to my students in class, I often say that, oh, American auctions are coming. I don't like to use the word American elections. It's about auctions. Even though it doesn't work, Kamala Harris raised more than a billion dollars and spent all of it in less than three months and uh, still lost. And she's in debt. Apparently, they overspend. Uh, and it is kind of a fake, the whole thing. It's some of the stuff that is coming out now about how Kamala Harris campaign spent money 
I mean, we thought there's so much glamour with all these celebrities coming and campaigning for her. Apparently, many of them were paid. Even Oprah Winfrey charged $1 million uh, for her staff who helped with that interview. So she's not contributing anything to the campaign. I want to know now how, what they paid to all these so-called uh, celebrities. Uh, so there is this fakeness also about who stands for what in this country. So I have very two simple points to make before I end this conversation. Number one, I think today America has become an illiberal oligarchy. Even the Democrats who kept campaigning that we are doing this for the sake of democracy are undemocratic. Look at the way they treated Palestinian Americans in this country. Even in their members of the Congress, they were not allowed to speak. They were not allowed to speak at the Democratic National Convention. The way and the brutality with the students who spoke for one side of the cause were treated and how students on the other. The pro-Israeli students are the only ones who deserve preservation. And the pro-Palestinians are being treated awfully. It's extremely undemocratic. We have killed freedom of speech. We have killed academic freedom. All. So this is not a democracy anymore. And even indicators, like if you go to the democracy index, you will see that the U.S. ceased to be a full democracy a long time ago. It's a struggling democracy today. The rise of Donald Trump, and I don't know how long this wave is going to last, and uh, will the Constitution remain in place, and if this is his last term, or will we completely give up on democracy, and Donald Trump becomes like Xi Jinping and becomes president uh, for life, I don't know what is going to happen. And I don't know what his consequences are going to be on the U.S. economy. Common sense tells us that some of his policies, especially protectionism, uh, to some extent could benefit the U.S. economy, but also could hurt it in a big way if other countries begin to retaliate against the U.S. with their own protectionism. It will end globalization and the global economy. Uh, so America could actually lose everything, its uh, prosperity as well as its freedoms. Uh, uh, from some of the policy rec uh, suggestions that Donald Trump is trying to make. But who knows? We'll see what happens. But I think at the moment, the key question is not about why Democrats lost. They deserve to lose. Uh, completely out of touch. Uh, if, you, if you go back and look at conversations for more than a year, I've been constantly showing you how Joe Biden's decisions he first of all forgot about America, just focused on the two wars for all his stuff. Look at Blink and all, just focused only on the two wars. But the graph of approval rating consistently said that more than 60%, 66%, 74% of Americans were extremely unhappy with the direction of the country. He didn't care. Continually the same policies, even policies which his own party did not approve. So America, will, this is not a democratic precedent. He was a democratically elected authoritarian guy. Didn't care for what the public opinion was. He had his own preferences and he pushed it. Uh, and his party members fell in line without challenging him. And of course, when they got a chance, they got rid of him. So the question really is, will America remain a democracy? Is America already an illiberal oligarchy? And also from a purely intellectual point of view, was America really a liberal democracy in the last five, 10 years or in the 21st century? Uh, if it was, then has it failed Americans? Or have Americans failed liberal democracy and we have not implemented it uh, as it is understood? A liberal democracy is essentially a democratic society which pays great attention to three or four things. What is individual rights, freedom of speech, freedom of thought, freedom of religion, and also believes in a small government. Really, that's what liberalism is all about. But we have turned it around and made uh, a liberal democracy about uh, government picking sides based on culture and 
uh, economics and privileging some and undermining others. So I don't think whatever we were practicing in the last 20 odd years in the US was anywhere near the textbook idea of liberal democracy. So anyway, these are serious questions. Uh, and uh, I was listening to Michael Sandel, professor of Harvard, who has been writing about the discontents of democracy. And he basically attributes uh, the, the tremendous loss of the Democrats to the growing discontents of democracy. Basically, he's also making the point uh, that democracy in general, is not just talking about liberal democracy, democracy in general uh, has uh, failed uh, the common people and therefore they have rebelled against it. So yes, that's the key question. Is this a rebellion against Democrats or is this a, a rebellion against the very idea of democracy? So I hope I have given you something to think about. Uh, and uh, um, please therefore subscribe to Conversations, like this video, press the bell icon and share this video with your social political network. Until next time, this conversation is not over. This conversation will continue. I'll keep talking about you, uh, about this issue as we go along and see how robust American democracy is uh, when it faces the challenge that Donald Trump is going to pose to it. Anyway, so please subscribe to Conversation, like this video, press the bell icon. Don't forget to share this video with your social political network. And until next time, be thoughtful, be worried. I am your host, Muqtadar Khan. Take care.